Mike Tomlin's comments about Justin Fields. I have my opinion. I've shared my opinion with the audience. They don't want to hear it again. They want to hear your opinion on what Mike Tomlin sure. had to say about the quarterback situation where technically Russell Wilson is still QB1. Justin right. Fields is QB2. Justin Fields is 3-0, and and he's getting better every week. Yeah. I, I mean, look, Russell Wilson's – it's Mike Tomlin's guy. I mean, that's just how I feel. It's – I, when I went through uh, that organization in training camp and I had a chance to spend some time with the brain trust, what was interesting to me was I said, you like hash this out for me. Um, and it was okay. You know, Russ is, is the experienced guy, all this stuff, you know, we, we kind of know where we can go with Russ. And then I, I think they had a huge evaluation on Justin Fields going into the, the draft where, where Fields was selected by the bears. And I think there were members of the organization who are, who were looking at field saying, well, the upside is so immense, especially uh, the, the dynamic aspect of him being able to use his legs as a runner, create all these different things. We didn't have under Mitchell Trubisky. We didn't have under Kenny Pickett. Um, we feel like there are elements of that part of his game that can cover for his limitations as a passer. And we can bring him along as a passer if he ends up being the starter ultimately. Tom leaned into Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson has the calf issue to, to kick the season off. And I think now the complication is Fields has gotten in there. He's won games. The offensive playbook is still pretty limited a, as a passer for him, but they have slowly started to open it up from one game to the next. If you look at his passing charts, you can kind of see what they've done. And he's had some big moments, frankly, that were taken off the field by a holding penalty, a drop, issues that weren't necessarily his fault. But I think what I really truly believe what Tomlin's doing right now is he's just biding his time. He's like, when we hit a snag, when we lose a game, when there's some ineffectiveness with with Justin Fields, I want this tool in my bag uh, called Russell Wilson, and, and I want to be able to pivot to it. And I, I just think that's the game that that Mike Tomlin's playing right now. I agree with you completely. And you never bench Justin Fields if you don't give him the QB1 label. Justin wasn't right. benched. Russell Wilson's healthy. 100%. It's the old 100% yep. rule. We said yep. 100% at the same, same time for different reasons. When the starter is 100%, he'll play. When When's he 100%? When we need him. Yep. When the guy who's currently <laughs> playing loses a game or does something stupid and we need to pivot, we're not benching him. Because I do believe that Justin Fields is regarded by many in the organization as the future. That they, in large part because he's more than a decade younger. But he's right. what Russell was in 2012 and 2013. This is the guy that we can build around. They're getting some some advanced reps, but they would never have to give him the stigma of being given the hook if it's as simple as we hit a rough spot. Oh, coincidentally, looky here. Russ is healthy. Let's go. And and I you know, you you can't engineer that, Charles, but when it falls in your lap. You run with it. And I feel like that's what Mike Tomlin's doing. And it sounds like we're on the same page. Yeah. And and they do think I asked uh, again, when I was, when I went through there, I said, do you have the 2025 quarterback on the roster? And I was told by a high ranking member, absolutely. We have the 2025 quarterback on the roster. We just don't know who that is yet. And the vibe that I took away was exactly what you just described. It was this immense upside of fields. We'll probably get him some reps. We'll see where he can go. And then we'll measure Russ. And by the end of the season, if Russ is flat, if he's this, you know, we'll we'll get to the point where um, when we have to make that decision about who gets a contract extension, Fields will ultimately be the guy that I think they would lean into, unless he was just terrible, unless he just fell apart. And and you're seeing, you know, the clips that you're playing. Uh, Arthur Smith's done a good job of keeping things short to intermediate with him. There's been a couple of times where he's uncorked some big throws with a big arm. Um, but I think the thing with fields that they're continuing to work on is just speed, 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 get the ball out faster. You know, don't take a lot of time to throw. Um, and, and let's continue to develop that. But I think for Russ to get the long-term extension in, in Pittsburgh, he would have to come in, be more than average. I don't, maybe not be exceptional, but be, uh, I think quite a bit more than, than, um, average and show them, Hey, there's a three, four year window here that I don't think they necessarily believe exists right now, or at least they don't know. Will Russell Wilson's people, the folks around him, the advisors, the PR machinery that 
I witnessed kick into high gear after he was benched by the Broncos last season. You probably got some of the same emails. Will he resist the urge to do the same thing as the trade deadline approaches? Because I could see a set of circumstances where he's healthy, he's sitting. Hey, why don't you trade me to a team where I can play? Mike Tomlin, you always say we want volunteers, not hostages. Right, right. I'm kind of feeling like a hostage right now. Do you think that Russell Wilson will give in to that temptation to try to stir it up a little bit? Because I don't know that Mike Tomlin's the guy you want to try to stir that up with. Yeah, I don't think Mike is. Um, I do think that if we get into a scenario where it's late October, um, Fields continues to take pretty significant strides from one game to the next, and Russ hasn't seen the field. And that's the thing, too. These questions that Tomlin's getting annoyed with, which frankly are self-created, they're not going away. And and all Fields has to do to keep this pressure on is A, win games, and B, show, look at my tape. Am I getting better? Have I gotten better? Is the offense, um, are we into 50, 60, you know, now 80, 90% of that offensive playbook? Is that accessible to me? If the answer is yes, if you're Fields, you're saying, okay, well, there's no reason for me to be sad at this point. Someone's got to make a declaration here. I, I'm curious to see how long Mike Tomlin plays this game, as you said, of, of you know, I'm not going to say it as long as I don't have to say it. And, you know, I'll, I'll continue to, to bob and weave and um, f- spar with the reporters rather than making a decision that corners me. But I, I think if you get into late October and Russ isn't seeing the field, and it looks like Russ may not see the field uh, at that point. I would not be surprised at all if his representation says, let's look a field and see where is their quarterback need where Russ can go in and, and play not a great situation, obviously. He wouldn't have been in an offense or a passing camp at that stage um, to just go in and all of a sudden pick up with another team, but certainly a better situation than not seeing the field at all for the Steelers. Well, and if I was the Steelers, I would not move on from him. I remember when they traded Josh Dobbs right before Ben Roethlisberger's elbow exploded in week two of the 2019 season, and then it was Duck Hodges at one point. You yeah, don't trade horrible. away a backup quarterback that you might need. And we saw last year how many teams needed their backup quarterback. The moment you trade Russell Wilson is the moment Justin Fields gets injured the next game. That's just the way the football gods would mess with the Steelers potentially. And I think what Mike Thomas is trying to do here, part of it is he's aware that Russell Wilson is paying attention to everything. And maybe yeah. you placate oh, yeah. Russ – By letting him believe, I'm still QB1. I'm just not 100%. I'm still the starter. They still love me more than Justin Fields. And maybe it's kind of a psychological game that Tomlin is playing here to try to keep Wilson engaged and accept the fact that maybe he won't play at all this year. Good luck getting a starting job elsewhere in 2025 if you haven't played at all in 2024. That's that's absolutely right. And I I think part of... I think part of the thought process too coming into the season is especially when he named Wilson, the starter, I think the thought was, well, Russell come in and if he doesn't play well, we can go to fields. And if fields doesn't play well, it's, it's, we still have the ability to go back to Russ now reverse that say fields comes in. He doesn't play well. Right. And then you install Russell Wilson at that point, Russell Wilson doesn't play well. It's, it's a, I think it's a stickier situation going back to fields if he's not playing well than it is switching from fields to Russ. You see what I'm saying? Like, you know, Russ, then fields, then back to Russ. This is how we want to juggle this versus the opposite. Because at the very least, and I think this is what Tomlin really values in Russell Wilson, is he does have experience. He is a capable passer. There is a floor there with Russell Wilson that is frankly much higher than the worst that we've seen of, of Justin Fields. And I do, I think that's part of why uh, Mike Tomlin is playing this game. Like he does not want Russ checking out. I I think he wants to uh, make sure that he gives himself the space to make that change and, and to do it 100% the way that you spelled it out under the guise of we never named a starter. Like we, I, I named Russ the starter. He got hurt. And then we had to go this other route. So it's not really a benching of fields. It's just the other guy's healthy. And now we make the change um, when it's appropriate. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.